let's kick things off. Uh, before we begin, does anyone have any late items that they want to add to the agenda? No? Okay. Uh, we can come back to that later. So I have a bunch of things here. So I've been digging through stuff and doing a bunch of thinking. The first one is I wanted to kind of bring up if we want to put secure defaulting and like friendly security as something on our radar, because that's something that's very high impact for the average user. For example, if you don't have a pod security policy set up, which is not something that's easy to set up, anyone can just take, take over your cluster. So that's kind of an area that's a bit unowned. And I'm wondering if we can take on some of the effort of making sure that the UX is smoothed out on those features and that we ship reasonable defaults. Anyone have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I kind of joined halfway through uh, you talking, uh, Valerie, but uh, it sounds like you're basically saying that we need to, that it would be a usability improvement if we had uh, a certain set of secure defaults that we encourage people to turn on with a Kubernetes cluster. Yeah, ideally, like if someone does a Kubatom setup, then they should be having to explicitly turn on some danger switches in order to be insecure. Yeah, uh, that's something that we have been, that we picked up as part of the multi-tenancy working group too, um, because it ends up being pretty cross-functional. Uh, and I think it would be awesome if more people wanted to work on the problem. Um, basically, the way I was looking at it was, uh, I originally came at this from a multi-tenancy perspective. So it was, uh, if you have a secure cluster um, and you're shipping that to people, it fails conformance tests because the conformance tests require that your, uh, that your Kubernetes cluster be pretty insecure in order to pass conformance. Um, and so what I was proposing was that we put together a set of profiles for how you want to run Kubernetes clusters. And so we could have like the regular conformance profile and then we could have additional profiles. So one could be a secure single tenant cluster profile and then one could be a secure multi-tenant cluster profile. And these would be, you know, just basically like profiles that we circulate among the SIGs and working groups. Um, and then we have the opportunity as part of the work um, in the multi-tenancy group and anything that we did here as well to work with the security researchers to then pass over our um, proposed secure defaults to them so that they could penetrate test them um, and then give us the results and then we could iterate on those profiles. Um, and so I, those are kind of the steps that we had lined up um, as something out of the multi-tenancy group. Uh, and we have two sort of very rough drafts that we would love people to poke holes in and suggest how to improve um, as we make those initial steps. But it would be awesome if we wanted to then extend that to like KubeADM setup and everything. But like that was just kind of how I was taking like my initial tentative um, approach. Yeah, like step one of making sure that there's a way to get conformance passes would be good. But I think longer term, if we were to go down this road, we need to look at changing like the base conformance stuff. Like for example, it would be awesome if pod security policy was default applied, like network security policy default applied, and that was the expectation. Yes, yeah, I totally agree. Um, there has been some suggestion that uh, people might not be open to having uh, different conformance profiles, but I think that, I feel like there is demand for this in the community to have secure by default um, set up. Uh, and, uh, the thing that comes up is that there's a lot of different ways you could approach this, but I don't think any of us are saying there's only one way. We're just saying here is a way. <laughs> and then if you want to suggest a different way, then let's add that to the list, you know? Yeah. Um, from my understanding of the performance test too, we could also modify a functionality. Like if we delete this configuration, then we should expect these insecure tests to pass. Yeah. Just expecting the defaults and relying on that. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, a couple, a uh, little while ago, I submitted a session with Duffy Cooley for the uh, Contributor Summit, but I thought this would be good to bring to usability as well, because this is 
a very horizontal issue. And that's a good thing for our SIG because we don't own anything vertically per se. Okay, so I'll catch up more with what the multi-tenancy group is doing and try to figure out like what's a somewhat reasonable way to propose steps forward then. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, George, could you hit the record button? Uh, is it not recording? I don't think so. Um, he's actually had to step away, but I think believe he left it recording. Oh, okay, yeah, I just didn't see the red dot going anywhere. Mm. Yeah, for next meeting, we actually have to sort out the Zoom licenses issue. Oh, you know, I actually remember he and I talked about this last time and he uses, it's a different tool. That's why I don't see the red dot. So it is recording, it's just not Zoom record. I forgot about that. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so next thing I had on the agenda is I wanted to look at like a very forming a very alpha version of some kind of usability review. So this is something where we could like maybe jump in at the provisional cap stage and offer some advice. So this isn't something that we're going to be formally doing, but I'd like to kind of have one or two ideas of if we did it, what would it look like? So we could potentially narrow it down more and then actually propose something. Bally, can you tell us a little bit more kind of like what you had in mind as far as a usability review? Um, there's some intersection with uh, API review, but I've noticed some gaps in API review around the necessity or clarity of field sometimes and for things that are somewhat cross-sig. So um, like one random example is we don't really have a concept of identity for random objects. We have service accounts, but there's not really a concept of what user or what action is triggering something through the system because it's such a huge cross-cutting concern, nothing is built like that. That's not something that we can just randomly tackle, but that's the kind of little design decision where when we do everything in vertical silos, we kind of wind up with emergent properties or emergent gaps that are kind of unfortunate. So it's why I thought it'd be worth thinking about, but I don't have anything outlined yet. I wanted to see if anyone else was interested so we could potentially just some things separately, kind of avoid bike shedding or a chilling effect, and then see if there's anything worth actually going further with and proposing or not. Yeah, uh, I think when you say usability review, that makes me think of like experiences, like getting started or um, like extending or um, I don't know, uh, adding a team member to uh, to the project. And so, so I, I guess my mind does go in like a few different directions as far as like what are we interested in any particular um, experience that would help kind of focus uh, a usability re review? Um, I'm not sure, like coming from more the engineering side of things, I think my concern is sometimes lack of bird's eye view when it comes to system design. But it's a little mm -hmm. bit funny because that falls partially under the purview of a couple groups like SIGARCH and in particular like API yeah. conformance. Yeah. Yeah, I think that it definitely, like that's definitely like a, a really good idea. Um, and that if, and kind of like as a prerequisite to that, it would almost be like, do we know um, what journeys uh, we're focusing on that are maybe like particularly common or, or you, know, you know, deployment, like the, the journey to deploy uh, something to Kubernetes is, um, I know that came up a lot during the last KubeCon, uh, that it was something that people found challenging to do. So it's kind of like, 
yeah, like, like kind of like, which one do we choose, you know? Yeah, I see what you mean. Um. Oh, the actually the the other one that um the other one that I remember is uh, one of the talks at KubeCon was this uh, analysis of Stack Overflow, mm-hmm. um, and it was like the top questions on Stack Overflow, and they they came out with like here are common app developer related questions, and here are common administrator related questions, and kind of like the top four uh, buckets um, under each one. Um, and just like off the top of my head, I think app developer was like deployment, uh, communication. So like, how do I expose an app? Um, and then also dev tools uh, and persistence. So like, um, how do I hook up storage? Um, kind of like with the little asterisk there that um, these are all related to getting started. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so so it, do, it is kind of leaning towards that, um, but that it was an interesting quantitative analysis that if we wanted to kind of like, say like we wanted to do a usability review of this particular um, journey, like deployment, like that, that could give us something to get started. I yeah. think, yeah, yeah but, I, sorry, Alistair, go for it. Sorry, Tasha. Um, um, I, I like, Gabby, what you're saying about like using the stories to drive the usability reviews. Um, perhaps another way, uh, I don't know if it makes it easier or, or this complicates everything, but another way may, may be to look across stories and think about um, evaluation of the taxonomy and language used. Um, you know, if that works really for the API or if it's more for the for the tools that the API uses, like KubeCuttle or something like that. But this, this, you know, any, I, th- I think a KubeCuttle, just because it's a very, very popular tool, we see a lot of our customers using. Um, but, we, you know, one of the things we've done with CLIs is do taxonomy reviews and um, language reviews as a way to at least start us down the road of uh, making things a little more usable or understandable. But I don't think it substitutes for journey for using journeys to uh, investigate aspects of usability. Yeah, I know that um, Sig CLI is working on getting some kind of telemetry from kubectl, but I don't know how well, especially with however they format it or anonymize it, it would translate to having user stories. Like internally, we're trying to work on something similar where we kind of get like a history of someone's more or less kubectl commands. Internally, we don't have like the same security concerns because that way we can kind of easily see like people are trying to do one functional action, but it's split over n commands, that kind of thing. Yeah, that would be a good thing to follow up with um, Sig CLI because I think kubectl is probably a, like a very good point to look at because it's a very discrete surface and it's because usually it's humans using it, so we don't necessarily have to filter out the signal of bots or something. If that would be a data source that we want to look at. Gabby, when you were talking about KubeCon and your um, things you're hearing there, was that uh, from users using particular interfaces like, like KubeCuttle? Or? It was um, just any questions that were tagged Kubernetes uh, on Stack Overflow. So um, I don't, the, the talk didn't really dive into like here are like the raw questions. Um, it was kind of like here are um, just the general categories and maybe like a little bit about them. Like what are like the specific um, like questions about deployment? Uh, that they scraped on Stack Overflow, um, but it didn't go into like that much detail. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, so regarding a usability review process, to circle back. I can try to draft up something quick. Maybe just send it to the mailing list and see if it's something we want to look at further or not. Um, 
Regarding the user story stuff, um, Gabby, again, this is something that you know way more about than I do. Um, what do you think would potentially be like a useful and somewhat easy to get access to way to get that information? The user story stuff? Yeah. Um, I could share the Stack Overflow talk. Um, he has his slides, uh, the guy that gave it, he has his slides in the, um, in the talk. Uh, and I think that that would be a really interesting, because I'm just remembering like the developer questions, there were also the administrator questions. Um, but that might be interesting to look at and to see if there's anything worth pulling out from there. Um, where we're like, we, we could do a usability, we could pick one of the buckets and try and do a usability review of one of those, for example. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to share that uh, afterwards. Okay. It'd be yeah. cool to do an overview um, or invite the person who wrote it to the next meeting to go over it too. Yeah, yeah. I um, I commented on his Medium post at one point was like, hey, like this um, say usability spun up, um, but wish I got his email. <laughs> yeah. Okay, just cool. an agenda check for those who arrived late. I mostly filled it up with stuff. Does anyone else have a topic they wanted to bring up before I kind of keep steamrolling on? Um, I can give an update on the survey. Ah, yes, thank you. Yeah, so there was an email regarding kubectl. I forgot that. Yeah, set context, use context, and, see. and I forgot who raised that. Um, because but there was some kind of you know not proper documentation or something around it so do you want to discuss that one um my my gut instinct is it's a small enough issue that they can raise directly with the sig if it's something where it's kind of more complicated or the sig necessarily doesn't want to fix it then maybe that's something we can weigh in on okay okay yeah, I think I replied to him asking if, if there is an issue already for that, but he didn't reply back. So, mm, okay. Uh, Gabby. Yeah. Um, so I can I can share my screen real quick just to show the um, proposal that I uh, mentioned last time. So um, this proposal uh, about the survey, uh, this is kind of like what was pitched uh, at our last meeting. Um, I wanna say that almost uh, maybe like a couple weeks afterwards, um, I got an email uh, about, a, about a survey <laughs> that uh, CNCF put out that was actually very, um, it was very, similar um like it was a survey uh, about taking like, the pulse of the community um i am actually newer to the kubernetes open source community so maybe some of y'all are kind of like already familiar with the survey and are like yeah of course <laughs> that's like the thing that goes out every year um but for me at least it was like super um it it, it kind of made me wonder if there was a way to maybe um Yes, like partner a little bit more with CNCF because I thought it was a pretty uh, in-depth survey, um, and they link to like previous surveys as well. Because um, I know like one of the inspirations for for putting out like this initial user survey proposal was the um, the Stack Overflow Developer Survey um, that was linked to here, uh, which has like uh, demographic information. Uh, about developers um, and just kind of like behavioral stuff, but also um, just kind of like also, it's also a similar pulse of the community. Um, and with the CNCF survey, I guess, um, there's also a lot of overlap. Uh, so it did kind of make me take a step back a little bit to kind of wonder like if we were to put out a survey like this, almost like, 
um, a little bit of a bigger question, like what would we be interested in learning? Um, and kind of like what has already been learned through this CNCF survey as well. Um, so yeah, and then uh, the other thing that I that I did was um, there's a there's a firm called Stratagen um, that uh, has kind of an approach to um, they have an approach to a research called Jobs to Be Done, um, and so I had reached out to them, and they had also kind of recommended this kind of like you know um, brainstorming almost of you know what what are the the questions that the community has um, about its end users and maybe almost doing like just like an initial brainstorming of what those questions are and doing kind of like a mapping of like, you know, what, what's the right way to go about answering those questions. Um, so that would be, and that they had also offered to help with facilitating something like that if we were interested in, but I just, um, it's just kind of an idea that I was putting out there. Um, so that's kind of uh, the status update for me. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, I was I was aware of the CNCF survey going out, but I admit it's something that I didn't really know a lot prior about prior to this year. Yeah, like I saw the stats at KubeCon, and I was like, I guess they got those somehow, <laughs> you know. But um, but yeah. Um, okay. So, so uh, what can I guess what can we provide in terms of maybe like targeting this or trying to come up with like what we're trying to answer? Because saying like go and make a survey is a very open-ended request. I guess it would be um, it would be very helpful to at least have an initial list of questions that maybe we're all aligned on uh, or questions that we uh, are curious about answering uh, about end users. All right, that sounds like a great thing to like send it a Google Doc to the mailing list and then come back to. Cool. All right, thanks for the update. Hi, this is Pamela. Uh, one thing I want to tie in with that is I think what Gabby said before about user stories and focusing on like specific use cases and then kind of looking into this survey. So I think those two can go hand in hand. If we identify what we want to focus on in terms of usability, we can use that as a platform to like go for our first survey and we can make this like more of a, it shouldn't be a one odd thing. It should be more of a, about like collecting users uh, you know, that we can communicate with regularly on like, you know, anything related to Kubernetes or, you know, use cases that we might be building on as, you know, different teams. Um, and if we identify what are the common different like workflows across all of us, we can like pick one and then, you know, kind of start dissecting that a little bit more. Like for us, like say a develop, like we kind of divide our use cases into two pieces. One is the admin infrastructure, uh, you know, persona that is looking at managing the infrastructure. And then we have the developer persona that is looking at deployments and running the applications. Hub. And for us, uh, both of them are really important and um, and especially monitoring troubleshooting is so important. So I went to KubeCon last year too, and I was, and then what I did was I focused on the monitoring and troubleshooting story because I wanted to kind of dig deeper into that. And kind of realized there's so much out there and you know was able to not <laughs> like it was it was so much information but at the same time i was like okay where do i start from like what do i focus on and I, i'm still trying to figure that out and with where's where i'm you know kind of looking at a community like this to kind of say okay let's focus here for the developer and let's focus here for the admin so if we if we you know when you send out the google doc and we identify our top use cases we can pick one and say okay let's just you know finish this and dissect this first yeah Thanks. Yeah, you're you're kind of leading nicely into the last thing that I had tabled, which was um, for those of you who are on like the mega thread around whether or not we want to deprecate kubectl CP and why or why not. Someone raised a pretty good issue, which is that we don't seem to really have um, personas prioritized in the project. And in that context, it was where do we place the like workload and flexibility of 
our developers upstream against features because that was a feature that is very useful to have as a user, but it's also very painful and difficult to maintain. Please. So that made me kind of wonder about more if we can codify what our main user personas are and our upstream priorities and kind of figure out how we actually want to be consistent about those. Yeah. So that's something I I had tabled for uh, Sig Arch because it's their decision making, but I thought we could discuss it here and kind of come up with some initial thoughts to bring to them. Yeah, I think the concern with the open source project is that we over rotate on uh, people who are contributors or builders of Kubernetes versus people who are consumers or users. Um, And I think it would be really valuable for us to formalize uh, project personas of both the users as well as the creators of Kubernetes, and then make sure that we're really understanding what those users need and want out of the experience. And that's what I really liked about what you were saying earlier, Valerie and Gabby, about um, how like we could do these usability studies and kind of chunk them into user experience because I think deeply understanding the initial user experience of these different personas as they start to use Kubernetes um, would give us the right feedback to feed into other SIGs about what we need to improve about that initial onboarding and using experience. Uh, Tasha, I was curious, um, when you say usability studies, do you know, um, do you happen to know like any specific channels that we can go through to, um, that may be existing already to talk to people? Yeah, uh, when we were kicking off this usability group, I was told that they have a bunch of people who are signed up to give feedback on Kubernetes who haven't really been um, used and who would be very eager to chat with us. So from what I understand, that there is a group um, who have signed up already to be sort of interviewed about their experience with Kubernetes and haven't necessarily like actually gotten to do that. Yeah, we can also tap into the CNCF end user community stuff. Yeah, because that sounds great. (laughs) Yeah, you know, what I think would be awesome is if, um, you know, I feel like we really need to kind of like show um, some forward momentum on a couple of these things. And what would be awesome is if someone wanted to volunteer to sketch out a couple personas that we could collaborate on. And also if somebody wanted to, volunteer to uh you know if there's a persona that you're really interested in maybe sketch out like what we'd like to learn about that persona through interviewing them and then we could kind of collaborate on that because we have the people we could talk to so i think it's mostly just kind of starting to connect the dots about like what we're proposing to do um a couple times uh brendan has mentioned that we uh, could have access to funds if we want to fund a usability study, but I feel like that's kind of jumping the gun a little bit, um, and it would be better for us to thoughtfully plan out what we'd like to get out of it and then see what we can do on our own, and then if there's something that's like very time intensive that would be like, you know, we already all have day jobs, then that would be the kind of thing we could farm out. Yeah, I definitely agree. Makes sense. And I'm always willing to kick off docs and stuff, but if someone else wants to, um, I won't. I won't arm wrestle you for it. Yeah, this is the kind of thing where I can volunteer some support, but again, I'm pulling the like engineer card. This is probably not something you want me leading. Um, I'll speak to somebody on my team and see if they are ready to pick this up, and I'll get back to you guys about it. And if I can get them to like commit and help out a bit. Um, you know, we, we could try sharing something next week. And moreover, this is, a, again, our understanding of our persona, but just kind of, you know, putting out there to, you know, kind of dissect it a little bit more from everybody's perspective. So I'll, I'll reach out to somebody. Okay, awesome. Okay, and I will also, um, I'll follow up more on the secure defaulting stuff. I'll talk to some people and I'll check in with the, uh, details of what the multi-tenancy group is doing and kind of see what we can do to drive that forward. Uh, so that's the end of what I had tabled. Um, does anyone have anything else or want to go into more detail on something? Um, Barry, you had something about icons that you shared and I wanted to kind of show something. Uh, I, I just kind of wanted to share something with everybody because um, at VMware, because we are uh, kind of exploring different products on Kubernetes, uh, we do have clarity, which is like a design system. 
um, that we have out there. Let me just like put that in chat. And the team has come up with like a few icons that are open source. So we are happy to like kind of explore that a little bit and like kind of talk through um, that with the team. So let me, I'll put that in the chat. And if you like just search in the icons section and um, look for like containers, pods, you'll see like different icons uh, that we're kind of exploring for. And this is open source, so it's available for use for the team. Pamela, do you want me to share that? Oh, I, yeah, you can share that online if you want to, yeah. I just had, I, I added it in the chat if you want to get access to the icons. Yeah. So Pamela was talking about, um, you're probably already at this page, but uh, you can see here we've got several icon sets. Um, but specifically, I know, you know, pretty much what you'd expect, um, but you'll notice that um, we do talk about um, let's see, namespace, um, which looks like a little TIE fighter. And we um, talk about, um, let's see, I think we call them nodes, but there is, this is what we we're using for things like uh, groups of uh, clusters, um, clusters and nodes within a cluster. Um, all pretty generic, but um, you know, I, I think when we, uh, I think when we talked this, talked about this back in um, the first meeting, there was this idea that how do we bring some sort of visual identity together across. The community, so that folks understand more what you know, uh, what these particular resources are as a visual asset. Um, Emma, were there other ones? I can't remember now. Um, I think yeah, that's all. Like we have containers, pods, namespace, nodes. Um, yeah, and I think uh, as a team, we are still exploring uh, things. So as when like you know, a new object type comes up. Uh, like, you know, we're looking at, um, we have data stores, of course, but, you know, like services, um, we have the team helping us out with, uh, we have like visual designer that helps us out with uh, adding icons into this repository. So, yeah. I guess, uh, what are the gaps or issues you see with the current icon set? I'm just not entirely clear on what you want to address. Um, I, 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 sorry, Pam, go ahead. Go, go ahead, Alistair, yeah. Um, so, so I think, like Pamela said, I think it's not a fully fleshed out set of default uh, Kubernetes resources, or even, you know, maybe we should be thinking at a higher level of, of uh, maybe there should be service icons for popular services across the Kubernetes ecosystem. Um, but I think to start with, you know, one gap is, do we have... Um, visual assets for the common Kubernetes assets or resources. Um, is this something that the community can get behind? Um, are there other, I know there are, there's another icon set being used, but I'm pretty certain uh, other companies are using different icons and would it benefit the community to sort of settle on something that's um, more uh, um, um, centered about around one way of showing things. Yeah, so basically the whole discussion about the SIG usability with Tasha started off with these icons because we were like trying to see if it kind of matches the standard of what the Kubernetes you know, community wants and if it's something that we could open source and like work with the team, like you know, the other teams out there. Uh, to make like a standard. So it kind of started off with that, but uh, this was definitely something less on the priority list when you started talking about usability. Um, yeah, I, yeah. Think to, I think to answer Valerie's question um, with the icons that are already up on uh, the upstream page, the reason that those don't meet 
really what people are looking to do is that they're designed for presentations. Like, so they're basically saying like, if you want to have a unified way of like describing an architecture diagram in the PowerPoint, like use these icons, but the icons that Alistair and Pamela are showing are really sh for use in a product. Um, and so the idea was just if, you know, would it be possible to suggest as an upstream team, like when you're describing a pod or a namespace or like all of these different um, concepts in a UI, could we standardize on what those visually look like so that at a glance a user knows what they're dealing with instead of every project kind of having a radically different way of depicting them? Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and so the, what Pamela and Alistair were showing um, is an example of an open source uh, site that they've been working on, um, which is just basically upstreaming a bunch of icons if anyone wants to use them. And then the question arose, like, would it, would Kub the Kub Kubernetes community be interested in these or are there already sort of standardized icon iconography that people are using that they could replace in theirs for people to leverage? My understanding is that most iconography is fairly non-standardized. Like I think I've seen, yeah. I think it's the second official set that I've seen now. I mean, I certainly can't speak for everyone, but I think that it sounds like a good idea. Yeah, I think it'd be nice. Um, maybe what we need to do is kind of put a call out to product designers from the various clouds um, and uh, other products and projects um, and just be like, hey, what are you doing? Um, and see if there's any patterns that emerge um, or not. <laughs> yeah. I see this directory has no um, owners listed in it, so that's not promising. The uh, Kubernetes icon set in community. Sorry, yeah. what, what is, like, can you add a little bit more on that? Oh, yeah, um, Valerie's describing uh, when you look at the GitHub repo that the icons oh. uh, that we were looking at, it doesn't have an owner's list, which okay. means it may not be, yeah, super collaborative. Okay, okay, got it. Yeah, it might not be actively maintained or very well owned. Okay. So that also means we could potentially PR in a SIG usability owner's file. Okay. <laughs> Just like slide it in there. <laughs> cool. Um, okay. Well, I think kind of follow up action items from this meeting are um, let's see if we can do a call to just kind of see if there's appetite for a wider iconography conversation. And if not, we could talk to people about it at KubeCon as well, um, since I think a bunch of us are going to be there and we're going to have a SIG usability table. Um, Let's also, uh, Pamel, uh, it sounds like you have some personas that you might be interested in sharing with the community and seeing if those yeah. would be an initial kind of kickoff for a discussion about personas upstream. Yeah, I'll try to pull in Boaz. <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Boaz is like a researcher who like really focuses a lot on personas. So I'm going to try okay. getting him to get involved. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then Gabby, um, were you going to, push the usability study piece forward? Yeah, um, I'll send out the list of questions, um, uh, or just like the duck to collect the list of questions. Um, and uh, I think I can also link the, uh, the KubeCon video uh, about the Stack Overflow analysis, uh, in case that helps with the personas as well, um, or anything else, capturing users, user journeys. Maybe Gabby, if you want to send out like a Google Doc that people can just kind of add comments on, that would be a good way to get people's feedback, especially when it comes to like what personas we want to prioritize, stuff like that. Cool. Yeah, sounds good. And then would you all be able to share it with other people that might be able to give insight into it? Just to for the purposes of collecting like a broad set of questions. Yeah, for sure. Um, for, uh, yeah, I think we kind of need to decide exactly who we're targeting um, and kind of use that to narrow the questions we're asking. And then we can use that to figure out who to invite to participate. Hmm. And then if we have things 
that don't fit inside that initial group, we could start kind of other groups of questions and then use that as well. Um, but I just think it's important to, like the thing I run into all the time is sometimes you're asking for feedback from people who aren't the right people to be asking for that sort of feedback. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then you really don't get the information. Like you, you can get pretty skewed results. Gotcha. Yeah, I guess in my mind, I had two different categories of questions. One were uh, questions that might fit into a survey um, to send to end users, but then the other is like the set of questions that like us as a community have about end users. Um, oh, cool. Um, so the, that, that was kind of like where my mind was going, like there's those two categories. Okay, yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah, I'm an ambassador with the CNCF, so I can bug them around, like, if we want to get access to the end user community, too, and, like, kind of use that as a ground to get information and do some, like, follow-up and interviews. Cool. If we want to get something that's more ongoing and qualitative versus just a survey. Cool. Awesome. I'll send that up. Um, do you mind if I jump in? Uh, you guys hear me? My name is Ron Norman. I, yep. I work at Google. Can you hear me okay? Um, thanks for letting me join in. It's my first time. I didn't want to uh, speak up too much, but there's a few areas here that I think uh, our team would, would love to partner in on, especially the personas. We've done some persona work uh, as well as some uh, partnership with the CNCF on the survey in the past uh, as far as some research questions. Um, so I'd love to plug in. I didn't want to volunteer too much uh, to drive, but I'd love to, to partner with uh, and see what our team can, can help out with. And then um, some of the discussion on usability review, that was really interesting. Uh, and I'd love to sort of compare notes and maybe give a few thoughts around a certain method called a heuristic evaluation that you, some of you are probably familiar with. Um, we've been using in, in uh, some of our internal processes to high effect, even at the stage of reviewing like API definition and CLI, um, if we can establish a set of good uh, UX principles and then validate those principles uh, with uh, heuristics. It's something that could plug into almost any type of phase of a project. Um, it might be worth considering and, and maybe like tabling into a different conversation, but um, is, is another thing that could be there uh, and beneficial as another UX method. Okay. Awesome, yeah, that sounds really good. <clears throat> yeah, would you mind sending a follow-up email or something about that? Yeah, absolutely. Cool, thank you. All right, I guess uh, last call for other topics or stuff that we want to talk about more. We've still got a little bit of time. Going once, going twice. All right, well, thank you everyone for joining. I've got a bunch of follow-ups here that I'll make sure we get to in the next couple of weeks. All right, have a good week. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, you too. Bye.